Hey everyone, Iman here. Today I'm putting this video together at the request of uh, one of my subscribers, Kyra. Uh, this is actually a simple but practical topic. Something uh, a structural engineer runs into all the time in everyday calculations. Uh, we will walk through how the floor loads get idealized on beams and girders. Let's get started. All right, before we jump into numbers, let's quickly go over the load path. In this floor system, we have a slab, beams, sometimes called secondary beams, girders or primary beams, and columns. Okay. The slab sends the gravity loads to the beams. So beams receive the load from the slab and transfer it to girders. And the girders transfer the load to the columns. The columns carry them down to the foundation. And finally, the foundation delivers the loads uh, into the ground. OK, so now, during the design process, sometimes we need to determine how much of the total load applied over the area of this lab is carried by each member. Okay. So, for example, uh, if the gravity load is 100 pounds per square foot, or I don't know, 5 kilonewton per square meter, we want to know the corresponding distributed load on the beams and girders, or if you want, uh, on columns. Okay? But in this video, we're going to talk about the distributed load on beams and girders. All right, let's move on to the first example. I've got a library reading room floor, and we need beams distributed live loads. Okay, so it's very simple. Um, here, three beams sit on six columns. Okay, no girders um, in this layout. Okay. From ASC 7, for libraries, reading rooms, the uniform live load is 60 PSF, pound per square foot. So our goal here is to convert this area load into linear distributed loads uh, on the supporting beams. Okay. Um, here we have two panels, right? 12 by 24 and 36 by 24 feet. And each panel is supported on two sides, right? These are our supporting beams. So they will bend only in one direction. That means the panel acts one way. So the tributary width is the center line to center line distance between uh, the two adjacent beams. Okay, let me show you real quick. Okay, now I'm going to draw the center line of the left panel. So basically this is going to be half of 12, which is 6 feet and 6 feet. Okay, And similarly for the right panel, this is the center line. So this is going to be 18 feet and 18 feet. All right, now I'm gonna pull out these three beams. The first beam, it's a simply supported beam with a uniform distributed load, 24 uh, feet long. And then the second beam Again, 24 feet long. And the third one, this beam, simply supported, and 24 feet long. Okay. All right, remember, the area load is 60 pounds per square feet. It's a pressure. It's uh, 
a surface load and we are going to convert it into the linear load. Okay. Okay. How? I'm going to show you. It's very simple. So it's 60 PSF. 60 P PSF and 60 PSF area load times 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 what times tributary area okay the tributary area for the first beam for the first beam that I'm showing in yellow is six feet it takes the load only on the right side okay so for the base for first beam the width is oops is uh, six feet and for the second beam basically this is an interior beam so in the interior beam it takes the load from the left and from the right side okay so the tributary width in this case is six feet plus 18 which is 24 feet okay and finally for this beam this guy it takes the load only from the left side which is 18 okay times 18 and that's it you have a simple supported beam you have the loads and you can um, use the statics to you know calculate the reactions, the deflections, the uh, you know moments, shears, whatever you want for your design. Okay, that's it for the first example. All right, um, this is the layout from the first example. Okay, and um, here for architectural reasons, the columns at um, line B must be removed. Okay. And instead, we add girders like this. So, these shapes are the second example. As you can see here, we have uh, four columns and two girders, and of course, three beams. Okay. So, um, again, we have two panels 12 by 24 and 36 by 24. And because there are beams on all sides of each panel, the floor will act two way. So such a panel is assumed to bend in uh, two directions, right? Like a plate. And they transmit its load to all four um, supporting beams along its edges. Okay. Now, with a two way panel, we're going to use the envelope method. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to bring my ruler. I'm going to set it at 45 degrees. OK. I'm going to start with this corner. And I'm drawing the boundary lines. And I repeat the process um, for all corners, like this. And now I'm going to rotate the ruler. It's 45. OK, perfect. And this corner. Again, I'm going to draw the boundary line. And over here, and I extend the line until uh, they meet. Okay. This is the intersection point over here and over here. Okay, great. Now, in this case, uh, these four lines. Um, don't meet at one point. So I'm going to draw one more boundary line that bisects the large area in the middle. Right? 
So, okay, great. It's called envelope method because, you know, the outline uh, resembles a letter envelope, right? The classic uh, triangular and trapezoidal patterns. Okay, so uh, on the right, the panel measures 36 by 24 feet. Okay, and the short side is obviously 24 feet. So half of this is 12 feet, and this distance is 12 feet. Okay, and because the dividing lines run at 45 degrees, the triangle height is also 12, because this angle is 45. Okay, and by the same reasoning, um, the height of uh, the trapezoid, this distance, is also 12 feet. Okay. Now, uh, similarly on this side, it's 12 feet, and this distance is also 12 feet. Okay. Now, on the left, the left panel again. Uh, let me bring in my mouse. Uh, there are supports on all sides of this panel. And it seems it's a two-way panel, but uh, we know that if the long to, sh to short span ratio, long to short, is greater than or equal to two, the panel is essentially one way. So over here I have 24 over 12, which is two, right? So the tributary width is half span each side. It's like the first example. It's a one-way panel. I'm going to draw the center line, and this distance is six feet. Okay, perfect. Now I can pull out this beam, beam B1. Again, it's a simply supported beam, and I'm going to apply the loads on this beam. So this beam takes load um, from left and from the light, uh, right side, okay? On the left, we have a uniform distributed load like this. The area load is 60 PSF, so this is 60 times the uh, tributary width, which in this case is six feet. And this is 360 pound per foot, okay? And also the triangle um, load over here, which is again, um, it's 60 PSF times, times what? Times uh, the tributary width, which is 12 feet, okay? Times 12. 60 times 12 is 720 pound per linear foot. Okay, great. Now, we can use the statics to find the beam reactions. And I'm going to call this joint I, and this is J, and this is RJ, R, sorry, RI and RJ. Okay, we need these reactions. Why? Because um, the beams transfer their loads through their reactions to the girder. Okay, so. Uh, right here, to find the reactions, I can take moments about uh, joint J, for example. Right. Okay, so Ri times 24 minus the distributed load effect, which is 360 times 24 times 24 over 2 uh, actually this is a positive and this is negative um, okay plus 
the area of the triangle is half of 720 times 24 times the arm which is 24 over 2 right this equals to 0 and if you do the math RJ uh, RI is 86 40 pound okay and similarly because we have a symmetry um, here it's gonna be um, 86 40 okay perfect now I'm gonna pull out the girder G1 this girder over here again I have a simply supported beam this is 12 feet and this is 36 feet okay and I have a trapezoidal load okay like that downward the area load is 60 PSF for the library uh, floor 60 times what times this distance this width which is 12 again 60 times 12 is 720 pound per foot okay and don't forget the point load from beans reaction downward okay this is 80 Six forty. Okay, again, the beams, the beams transfer their loads to girders through their reactions. This is the beam reaction over here, over here, over here, 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 and here. Okay, so don't forget to uh, add the point load uh, on the girders, and that's pretty much it. So again, you can use the statics to calculate the reactions for the girder you can you know calculate the maximum moment shear whatever you want to design the girder uh, all right that's the conversion from area load to linear if you found this useful be sure to like and subscribe to support my channel thank you